Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. Many people, just like number one, have covered some very basic theoretical endings. Previously, we looked at how a knight and bishop can be used to checkmate a lone king. And what we also looked at in a separate video course was how you may apply checkmate using the knight pair. Now, this is extremely rare, but how many people actually said this was not possible? It is, guys. It is. All you need is to have the right setup and everything is possible. Today, we have not one, but two games. The same time, I mean, I want to go through the entire games. What I really want to do is to focus upon the very endings. Both games that I shall be looking at are real games and they come from people like the Minister of Defence, Sasha Grichuk and Savian, who is already a star in his own right. The common denominator is this guy. Our Minister of Defence is the person who was actually involved in both of the games we will be looking at. His first game was against Grichuk. That dates back to 2012. The second one was against Savian. Again, that was played actually more recently. This one was played in 2018. I will provide the full details when we get there. When do we get there? Well, there is no better time than the present. Let's bring up this board. Sega has this side, and without me going through this game, I will start it up and we'll look at it in more detail when we reach a critical point, if you like, because this game between Sergei and Sasha is way too long to analyze. Let me shut up for now until we reach the end game. So, we saw the Tarash in the French. A Queen's came off. And let me tell you something in the meantime about these two. They have more than 80 games against each other. And most of the time, Sasha finds a way to outsmart Sage when Sage takes his side of the board. When Sasha introduced a brand new Queen, does anyone know? He did this illegally. Sasha here used two hands, but the entire incident went undetected. When the pawn reached the first, Sasha used his right hand, but when the brand new queen emerged, Sasha used his left hand. So leaving this aside, this is what we're looking at. So what we're looking at here is move 74. Sega just handed over his knight for a pawn that was just about to run. Such has a huge challenge on his shoulders. Now only he has a very difficult task to find a way to checkmate Sega using two minor pieces but he has only seconds on his clock. Combine these two factors and there may be a third one which we haven't mentioned. And this game is most likely to end in a draw. If Sage, who is regarded to be the best defender in the world, finds all the moves that matter, Sasha will struggle even further. Sage here went king e5. Sasha lifts his majesty to the third. The king finds the sixth. Sasha Two gets the king to find this outpost, and this is how Sage does it. It's the move in the right direction. As soon as Sage got his king to find the eighth, Sasha had 16 seconds remaining on his clock. Sage, and I'm not 100% sure, had 16 seconds remaining. So both are doing what they were doing 
with an increment that we're getting from each move. This ending was so fast, very few might be able to understand how good these players really are. This is something I also need to share before I forget. Sergei ended the game with 32 seconds on his clock, but Sasha too had added another 14 seconds to his own clock. How can we be certain of this? Well, uh -huh. I have exactly what I need to show you. This picture speaks a thousand words. And I hope you can see both the ending where Sega gives up and the timings on each player's clock. So, how did we get here? And here it comes. For those who know how this one works, you need His Majesty got all the way right of the board. Both players know this. King d5, king c7, knight c4, king b7, and Sasha needs to find a way to get the king to go in the other direction. And needs to do this super fast. Bishop b6, king a6, king c5, the king goes back, king b5, and yes, Ege finds this spot. King c6, Sergei sticks the king here into the correct corner. The knight backs off. There comes the king east. Knight d5. Sergei goes back. And whatever you see here takes place in milliseconds. In with a check. King b8. Bishop c5. There comes the king east. Bishop a7. King d8. Knight d5 again. There comes the king back to c8. Another check follows. The king is forced east again. King d6. There goes the king further east. King e6. Sergei returns his majesty to d8. And Sasha checks him in this way. The king is forced east. Knight f5. There goes the king again east. Bishop c7. Sergei has no problem. Yo yo in here. We have this check. King f8. King f6. There goes the king once again in the direction Sasha wants him to go. And with Sasha getting his king to move here, Sagai for the nth time gets his king to go west. This is a tactic you don't get to see frequently. And with the check, I hope you can see the pattern Sasha uses. With Sergei forcing the king to g8. Look at how easy Sasha makes this one look. He got the knight to back off. The king now forced to the very edge of the board. Where Sasha wants him to be. It should be 7. King g8. And this is all he took. Not only we're looking at mating one, but we've got to salute Sasha for not only finding all the right moves, but finding them super fast. I have not seen this mate being applied in the way it was delivered in such a speedy, fast way. It is, let me tell you, a near impossible task to accomplish. Mind you, Sasha did this near instantly. If I were to guesstimate both Sagan and Sasha were playing out two moves per second. Using any definition, this is incredible stuff. Don't think for a second what Sasha did can be matched by others. When other quite strong GMs tried the exact same thing, they have not been able to checkmate their position, and the game's true. Okie dokie, this was one game out the way. The second one is in a rarer game. And that of our first one. Who's playing or who we're playing here? It's again our Minister of Defence, and this time he's up against Savian. The has got all the way to the very start, but one thing for sure will not be able to analyze this game. Why not? Well, it's 92 moves long. Let me talk you through what you see until we reach a critical point. 
We have the Spanish. There comes the Berlin. And what you see unfold is the anti martial variation. Queen c8, h3, rook b8. Pieces are developed one by one. The knight here is attacked. Knight h7, queen g3, bishop g7. And the game continues with f4, takes, takes. The knight returns to f6, bishop e3, knight d7. A few exchanges follow. And gradually, the board begins to get lighter. The rook here was pinned. King h1, knight f2, king h2. The checks continue. His majesty returns to the first. The rooks are then eliminated. Knight takes, king h1, king g7, rook e1, rook h8. Sage finds a way to swap the queens by this check. So when the rooks also went, can you make what size stands better here? What you see may look equal, but is it really? King f6, this pawn on the queen side bites the dust. Knight e4, knight e3, king e5, near Sage rushes with his majesty. f5, knight back to base. Samian then chases after this knight, and here Sage brings back his knight to the second. We save in game for it. This fork appeared. The knight is pursued. There goes another pawn down the drain. And with Sabian now chasing after the shadows of this knight, another two pawns disappeared. Knight d3, knight d2. We're getting this slowly, slowly. When this pawn was attacked, Sabian marches with his king. This guy bit the dust. Knight c4 followed, and this is how Sega plays it. With this guy in c2, that is the only thing that can potentially promote to a brand new queen, Sabian did not want to risk it. In the end, he sacrificed the knight and was now banking on a dead draw. What you see here is a draw, unless you can prove otherwise. You're just past the halfway mark in this game. If anyone is playing for a win, it has to be Sabian. Once this guy on g6 falls, a draw can be claimed. Sabian went for this push. Sage checks the king, king c5, the knight maneuvers to safety. Sabian advances again. The knight backs off here to now force the king to move. King f2, king c3, check follows. King d3, king e1, and so far the knight is parked on g3. Seven only has king moves, does he not? King c4, king d2, king d4, knight c3, king c4, knight e2. There goes the king to the fifth. Saige brings his king to the third. And you may begin to wonder why a person like Saige did not terminate this game and settle for at least a draw. Well, is it Sabian who was fighting for a win? To do this, this guy on g4 must queen first. Now, if you watched an earlier video I brought out, looking at a very similar ending such as this one, even if Sabian promotes to a queen, he will still not be able to win. Why not? Well, two knights versus a queen is automatically a draw. So, for this very reason, Sage was the one who wanted to make or try and do the impossible. Is he seriously looking to checkmate using the two knights? Anyone who plays the game will also know it is impossible to do this. Or shall we say, a very impossible task. Let's see what went on here. King c5, Sage maneuvers his knight here. There goes his majesty to the sixth. And with the king following after him, Sabian goes for this move. 
He knew it was near impossible to get checkmated. But in the meantime, he was not going to create a situation where he could get his king trapped. Knight d3, Samian returns his king to c6. Sergei follows his through with a check. The knight is now attacked. The king comes to the rescue. Samian brings his king closer to his own pawn. The knight now retreats, king f6, knight e3, king back to e6, knight f5, and with the king now dropping back to the seventh, Saviour must have been laughing his head off at this point. King d5, king c7, knight d4, the king yo-yos, knight e6, king e7, and with this knight backing off, Saviour goes king f7. King d6, king f6, Sergei delivers his check. The king backs off. Now Sergei moves forward while this king responds. Siemian's king is pursued until he gets trapped. This is what the Minister of Defense is banking on, or well, has been trying to in the last 20 moves or so. In essence, he has turned into the Minister of Offense. Samian here brings his king into the eighth. Sergei uses the knight to block the king's axis anywhere to the west. So with him coming down to the seventh, Sergei brings the king closer and right into this square. King g6. What happened next? Let to this knight response. His majesty is now forced back with the king stopping, not stopping, blocking, if you like, the axis to f8. Sabian takes him back to the last. King f6 led to king h7. Sergei finally unleashes this knight by placing him here. It was now never. What you see here is even more difficult to what Sasha did. There are two squares available for occupation. No one in their right mind would put the king to the edge of the board. And for this reason, Sibia moved him to g8. Sergei occupies now e7, and what follows, what has fallen in the last 30 moves or so, was rarer than rare. Sergei is going for a checkmate in Sibia, is now realizing he might be able to get there. How many moves has Sibia got? Well, only one, of course. But without his options, he has king h8, king h7, and also this move to g3. This is what he went for. At this point, it's a lovely diagram to copy over and use it as a thumbnail. And this is exactly what I did. Go back to the thumbnail, and this will be one of two, or one of the two diagrams I used. Don't think for a second, this is an easy one. Sabian went, well, he went for it. But can he ever get the chance to promote? And even if he does, he won't be able to win. I'm stopping here for just a few seconds to allow everyone to absorb the ins and outs of this diagram. Do you eliminate this pawn? And if you choose to do so, what knight would you use? And this is exactly what end games are all about. And coming back to this in just a sec to allow everyone to try and work out if you need to take, and if so, which knight to use. Okay, guys, here we are. Use this as a puzzle of the day. Has anyone chosen to remove the pawn, and if so, how? Well, it doesn't matter. If the pawn comes off, this is what you get to hear. It's the wrong answer. You will never be able to win this game. And this using either knight. Instead, if you try this knight check from h6, you will also have blown it big time. Once the king makes it to h7, the damage is already done. Why? Because this guy now on g3 needs to go. By eliminating him, this knight also departs and the draw is declared. It's forced. 
Coming back, there is only one way to do it. This is what you need to do. And it's exactly how Sergei played it. With the king now forced to the very corner, Sergei went king f8. And at this point in time, Sabin did the right thing and threw in the towel. For those who are unable to see actually the finish line, let's fill in the gaps. With the king, I have actually no moves. We know if this guy was not on the board, the game would end in a stalemate. And because this guy is here, Savia needs to move him. Once he finds the brink of promotion, there are two ways or two options you can exercise. One is knight h6, knight d6. Anyone approach ends in the same way. Knight d6, for example, forces North to promote. And because this promotion and let's say to a queen or any other major or minor piece, is now able to control this square on f7. Once he's not occupies it, this is how you checkmate your position. And let's hear it. Ah, checkmate. So again, in fact, found the only way to checkmate Sabian using the knight pair in this very fine way. Yeah, what we just experienced takes an extraordinary skill. And Sagi had no trouble finding all the moves that matter to get there. Have you ever seen anything like this? Well, previously. On 20 October, I did bring out something very similar to this diagram. To cut to the chase, check out this link. The extra pawn on the board was in fact the reason why the checkmate was possible. Very same thing is true in this game. If this guy was not on g3, Sevian would have no moves and this would have been a stalemate. I remember call this extra pawn more is less. I hope you know what I mean by this. And this was it guys. Two completely different scenarios, two different games with two spectacular endings. Sasha in our first game produced something extraordinary. Not only this, but it did this in a record time. Adding, in fact, more and more time just, just on increment alone is something, well, nearly impossible. Try it, guys. Use a knight and bishop against a lone king and then try and checkmate him by adding to your clock by using the increment you get. This game between Sega and Sabian, and particularly the ending, was really impossible. We only see this in theory, but in this game, we also saw it in practice. There is far more to come, but there are far more important things to look at. Your chess puzzler here, and you know the drill, safety always first.